Hello! For this tutorial I'm going to be covering how to create a custom shader node in Stingray that represents ocean or water. So the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, open up any project you like and uh, navigate to wherever you'd like your material to live. Right click to create material standard. I'm going to name this guy Ocean. So if we click on it, you'll see over here to the right side in the property panel we have a button that says make unique. So I'm going to do this in the shader graph. So I'm going to do make unique, open shader graph. I'm going to drag this shader graph out here so that we can see this and the panel itself. So for this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and delete all these middle stuff we have here in our standard material so I can walk you through this step by step on how to set up all the proper shader nodes. So if we zoom in here on our standard base and we select it, you'll see materials uh, properties over here on the right. So we want to make these normal since we're going to blend some normals together from world space to tangent space. We want the blend, blend node to be transparent fade. So we'll set that first. Now back over here into our shader nodes, we're going to add some inputs for material variables. We're going to do this uh, three more times. So I'm just going to copy this node and paste it two more times. And then I'm going to rename these and hook these up. So the first material variable we're going to do is going to be our water color. You want to put that in the display name and also in the node name. So you can see that it's named as the node and also that's what it'll display in the properties panel while you're editing it. The next one we're going to do is roughness. And again, you're going to want to make sure you name these twice here in the uh, display panel. We're also going to do metal and one for opacity. So then we want to hook these up. So uh, watercolor is going to go directly as our base color. Roughness is going to go into roughness. Metal, of course, will go into the metallic, and opacity can go into the opacity slot there. Now, one thing we do want to change is we want to change these uh, roughness, metal, and opacity from vector threes to scalar so that they're just dealing with one value at a time. There we go. So the next part we want to set up is we're going to blend some normals. So we want to add a new node here. This is utility under blend normals. So you can add that in. We're going to plug this RGB channel directly into the normal channel on the standard base. It's going to give us some errors here because we're definitely looking to put in some map slots. So that should be the next thing we add. We're going to go to sampling, sample textures. We're going to add a sample texture. Copy and paste that and do it again because we're going to add one for each side here and these will be the normal maps that we blend together to give us our cool water effect. So we want to make sure we name these. I'm going to call this one Water Normal 2. And you want to name these in both spots as well so you get not only the node name but the display name. I'm going to name this one Water Normal 1. So the next thing out of here we want to do is we want to add a panner. So the panner is also under utilities and we're going to do this for each one as well so you can just copy and paste this node back in here again. The RG channel is going to go directly into the UV channel for the water normals themselves. And out of each of these panners we're going to set up the properties that we want to adjust. Um, we're going to also blend between the texture coordinates and the UV tiles. We want to add a multiply to do that first under math. And that out's going to go into the UV channel. We're going to take this texture coordinate that we left in the beginning. We're going to plug this guy into the A channel. And then we're going to add another uh, material variable. So I'm just going to copy one I had already created. Drag this over here. And this guy we want to make sure is not scalar, but vector 2, as we have a, both a U and a V channel. And I'm going to change this node name to UV tile 2 to correspond to the uh, second water normal 2 that I'm going to be adding in there. So, moving on to the rest of this panner, we're going to want to add a time. 
which is going to be under input time. We're going to add this to the time node here. And then we're going to add two more variables that just have a scalar. So we're going to copy this roughness, bring him over here, paste him again. So we've got two of these guys, and we're going to plug them into our U and V channel for speed. So the first one is going to be speed underscore U2. And then for the next one, we're going to do speed underscore V2. And this again corresponds to the UV channel speed of the panning of the normal maps that we are blending together through this node. So we're going to basically do the same thing for this next panner. So I'm just going to copy this entire group. I'm going to paste it down here. And then I'm going to hook these up. UV channel time, speed, and speed. We do need to change the names on these because this is no longer U2. This is going to be U1 and UV tile 1. So we're going to change these to U1 and V1, and then I'm going to make sure and change this UV tile 2 to UV tile 1, and UV tile 1 as my display name. So let's have a quick look here. We've got our multiplier times, we've got UV 2s, we've got UV tile 2, UV tile 1. This all looks correct. We have no warnings or errors. Everything should be named properly. So I'm going to go ahead and save this shader now. And I'm going to close out of here. And my material should be compiling here. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure and apply this to something in my scene so that we can see what's going on. So I'm going to do create primitives, plane, and I'm going to add a plane out here to the middle of my scene. I'm going to set the values of the location to 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to change the scale to something really large. So let's do 1,500 meters. So now we have somewhat of a big plane here. And then we want to take this ocean material and we want to assign it to our plane so we can select our plane in the scene. And then we can drag this ocean shader over here into the material slot. And it'll now apply this ocean shader to our scene. So let's, uh, let's set up some values here. So for the watercolor, let's do something very low, 0.001. And let's set our roughness to somewhere a little shiny in here, maybe a little metallic. And let's bring this opacity to about 8 or so. Now let's look at these UV tiles. Let's set the first UV tile to 50. Oh, well, it looks like we didn't set up our shader properly, so we'll go back into our shader. I want to make sure that I have my UV tiles set up here with a max of 50. So if I select those, I can change this max value here to 50 on both of these UV tile parameters inside my shader graph. That'll allow me to put larger numbers in there and really tile this over a large space. So now that I have that set up, I can go back to my shader here. Let's change this node to 50, and let's set up that other UV tile to do 5. We can set our speeds to 0 0.01. So the last thing we want to do is we want to make sure we have a normal values uh, for the textures in here. So in my texture folder, I already have an ocean normal map, and I'll include this for you guys to download. So if you grab this normal map and drag it over here into this slot, you can see now that we have an ocean material here panning around. And it doesn't look half bad. Now if I grab my light source here, and I rotate this a bit, get that pointing down a little bit better. Now you can see you have some pretty good water reflections going on here. So
So as we pan around, you can see we've got a uh, pretty good panning going on here. It's a pretty decent speed. And the normal maps are looking pretty good. If we look out at the horizon, it almost looks like an ocean right there. And as you pan left and right, we turn off this grid. Different reflective values. Looks pretty good. And if we go down low here to the surface, still holds up pretty good. We get pretty low here. Another cool thing we can do if you go to your entities, midday shading environment. Let me scroll down here a little bit and grab the lens quality. We can enable this and change the distortion value so that when we pull up the distortion, or pull down the distortion, it'll stretch your scene out a little bit. It can give you the nice values that you're looking for to give that false horizon or the little curvature of the earth depending on where you are in your ocean. So as you look around you'll see that we have the water reflecting light values properly and it's a pretty decent water shader. Now you can change all these values pretty quickly by selecting your ocean material coming over here and changing some of these UV tiles. So if we went from 50 down to 10 you can see now it's not quite as large as it was and this will give you different effects um, however you want to set these up. You can also change the speed variables and give you a little slower look on the water. So you can use this water for an ocean type setting or you can uh, tweak the variables yourself and set it up for puddles or fountains or any other type of material that you would like to use. So that's a really quick tutorial and to cover again, opening the shader graph, we'll end on this nice little picture here. This is setting up all our shader nodes right here in Stingray. And here's the last screenshot for you. Setting up a watercolor that you can adjust through Vector3, your roughness, metallic, and opacity that are set through scalar values, blending two different normal maps, or in this case one normal map, but twice with two different UV panners over a period of time using the UNV channels to pan that uh, variables back and forth uh, through the time and the speed. So by setting this shader up and then applying it to a flat unwrapped plane or whatever mesh you would like to use, you can get a pretty realistic water effect. Thanks, hope you enjoyed this tutorial and look forward to more in the future.